Hi. Today I am going to start from the beginning and in detail the systems biology and bioinformatics with detailed applications. And this is also available on paid, like you can also subscribe for monthly fees, something like 500 Indian rupees or let's say $10 a month. So if you are interested, then you can also contact us via email and please subscribe the channel so that you can be updated from time to time regarding all the details about the complete systems biology teaching. This is also applicable for those people who are interested in data science and have some biology background. And this is one of the finest subject which will help you to bo or boost up in understanding the details of data science in health sector or biological science or biotechnology also. So please subscribe our channel Bioinformatics for All and the link is here. You can also find it. So now I will be covering here three main books. Of course, there will be more than 10 books, but these are the three main books which I will be covering, which are the foundations and which will help you really in depth. So first book is the book uh, that is called Foundations of Systems Biology, which was edited by Hiraoko Kitano. This was one of the well-known system biologists from Japan. And then second book is Introduction to Computational Genomics, a Case Studies Approach. Third book is Systems Biology Applications in Medicine. Now, before we go in detail, now I am starting from the first chapter of the Kitano's book, that is System Biology towards System Level Understanding of Biological Systems. So, in general, if you want to understand the system biology, it is a new field, or it was a new field. In biology, that aims at system level understanding of biological systems. So, what do you mean by systems level understanding? If you want to understand, for example, a motorbike, then you have different components and you want to understand all the different components and then you want to link them with, with together in order to function with their main purpose. In the same way, if you want to understand system biology and implement system biology, for example, system biology of cancer or some other things, then you need to understand each and every component in proper way and then try to link them up so that you can mimic the entire process from one level to another level, from cell level to tissue level, tissue level to organ level. And the right side figure is basically representing the system's biology details, how you can apply, how you can think. For example, see what is system science, what it includes here. So system sciences include modeling concept, analysis, synthesis. Then it comes information sciences, that is computer science, databases, modeling tool, visualization, and then third one is life science. So in life sciences, you can understand the biological hypothesis, genetic mod modification, quantitative measurement. Now, system biology is a field that takes a holistic view or approach to understand complex biological system. By studying the interactions and behaviors of the interconnected components, rather than focusing on individual parts in isolation, it integrates the concepts and methods from various disciplines, including mathematics, computer science, physics, multi-biology, to build computational and mathematical models. It also allows the scientists to analyze large data sets, such as those from genomics and proteomics, to or the clinical data set, to understand how these interactions lead to emergent properties and functions at cellular tissue and organismal levels. Now, next part is the key concepts of system biology, holistic approach, interdisciplinary nature, 
computational and mathematical, mathematical modeling, then integration of omics data emergent properties. What is it important for? Understanding the complexity, advancing medicine, driving new technologies. So here on the right side, the figure represents some of these key aspects as well as the complexity or the important points to understand in system biology. So here, for example, biological knowledge, then experimental readouts, then data analysis and modeling. So what you get the hypothesis here, like questions and hypothesis, a structural experimental data, and then here novel insights, and here what you include, new computational approaches, new knowledges, new experimental methods. Now, the scope of system biology is potentially very broad and different sets of techniques may be deployed for the research for each research target. It requires collective efforts from multiple research areas such as molecular biology, high precision measurements, computer science, control theory and offer other scientific engineering fields. Research needs to be carried out in four key areas, genomics and other molecular biology research, computational studies such as simulation, bioinformatics and software tools analysis of dynamics of the system, and then finally the technologies for high precision and comprehensive measurements. And these things have been summarized in these two figures in a clear way. Now, to be more specific, in order to understand biological system as systems, we must accomplish the following. For example, system structure identification. So experiment, modeling, analysis, data, Pre-processing data, visualization, concept model, mathematical model, parameter estimation, parameter uh, estimation, then parameter visualization, system analysis, simulation, predictions, hypothesis testing, designing of the experiments, and finally, the data acquisitions. So, for example, here in system structure identification, for first of all, the structure of the system needs to be identified primarily such as a regulatory relationship between the genes and interactions of proteins that provide signal uh, transfection, metabolic pathways, as well as the physical structures of the organisms, cells, organelle, chromatin, and other components. Both the topological relationship of the network of the components, as well as the parameters for each relation needs to be identified. To use the, the use of high throughput DNA microarray, NGS, protein chips, RT-PCR, and other methods to monitor biological processes in bulk is crucial. Nevertheless, methods to identify genes and metabolism networks from these data have yet to be established. Identification of gene regulatory networks for multicellular organisms is even more complex as it involves extensive cell-to-cell -cell communication and physical configuration in three-dimensional space. A structural identification of multicellular organisms inevitably involves not only identifying the structure of the gene regulatory networks and metabolic networks, but also understanding the physical structure of all animals precisely. Now, second point, what you need to understand is the system behavior. Then third one is system control. And finally, the system design. In system behavior analysis, once a system a structure is identified to a certain degree, its behavior needs to be understood. Various analysis methods can be used. For example, one may wish to know the sensitivity of certain behaviors against external perturbations. How quickly the system returns to its normal state after stimuli, such as the, uh, such an analysis not only reveals the system level characteristics, but also provides important insights for medical treatments by discovering the cell response to certain chemicals so that the effects can be maximized or minimized while lowering possible side effects. System control in order to apply the insights obtained by the system structure and behavior understanding, research into establishing a method to control the state of biological system is needed. Now, system design ultimately we would like to establish technologies that allow us to design biological systems with the aim of providing cures for diseases. A uh, one futuristic example would be actually design and grow organs from the patient's own tissue. Such an organ cloning techniques would be enormously useful for the treatment of diseases that require organ transplants. There may be some engineering applications by using biological materials for robotics or computations. By using materials that have self-repair and self-sustaining capability, industrial systems will be revolutionized. Now. 
measurements, technologies, and experimental methods towards comprehensive measurements. A comprehensive data set needs to be produced to grasp the entire picture of the organism of interest. For example, the entire sequence has been deduced for yeast and a microarray that can measure the expression of all the genes and NGS also can do the same is readily available. In addition, extensive studies of protein protein interactions using the 2H hybrid method are being carried out. Efforts to obtain high resolution spatio temporal localization data for the protein are underway. But this book has been written in 2001. So these are the oldest concepts. But now there, these things have already been added. These things have been advanced. So for example, high throughput protein, high throughput NGS, the, uh, the gene expression, gene mutation, all the proteins now you can measure by using the proteomics technique or uh, all the genes details can be measured by using NGS approach and much more different technologies. So all these things have been identified. So, so if you have a good background of system level understanding, you can achieve a lot of goals. Now, measurements for system biology. Although efforts to systematically obtain comprehensive accurate data sets are underway, systems biology is much more demanding for experimental biologists than the current practice of biology. It requires a comprehensive body of data and control of the quality of data produced so that it can be used as a reference point for simulation modeling and system identification now factor comprehensiveness time series comprehensiveness item comprehensive comprehensiveness in terms of target factors that are being measured such as numbers of genes and proteins it is important that measurement is carried out intensively for the factors, genes and proteins that are related to the central genes and proteins of interest. Or you can also see, uh, say, the master regulated genes or proteins. Unless all the genes and proteins are measured, how effectively measurement covers the factors of interest is more important rather than the sheer number of factors measured. Time series comprehensiveness in modeling and analysis of a dynamical system. It is important to capture the behavior with fine grained time series. Traditional biological experiments tend to measure only the change before and after certain events. For computational analysis, data measured at a constant time interval are essential in addition to traditional sampling points. Item comprehensiveness, there are cases where several features such as transcription level, protein interaction, phosphorylation, localization, and other features have to be measured intensively for the specific targets. Now, it comes to the point, systems, systematic means that the measurement is performed in such a way that obtained data can be consent, constantly integrated. The ideal systematic measurement is simultaneously measurement of multiple features for a single sample. It is not sufficient to develop a sophisticated model and perform analysis using only the mRNA or protein level. Multiple data needs to be integrated. Then each data point has to be obtained using samples that are consistent across various measurements. If samples are prepared in substantially different ways, two data points cannot be integrated. Although this requirement sounds obvious, very few data sets meet these criteria these days. This is just one of the representation. For example, in biological science, experimental data, microarray, NGS, proteomics, quantitative, measurement, genetic, biochemical, and cell signaling modifications. Now, theoretical science, hypothesis theory, principles, mathematical modeling, statistical analysis, synthesis, application drug discovery, bioengineering, biomarker discovery, and end toxicity analysis, computational and information technology, biological databases, biological tools, and softwares, visualization, data mining, and simulation. Now, next generation experiments, this is purely like you need to understand what is microarray, what is NGS platform, what are the uh, Oxford nanopore, and then what is the, what are the different proteomics platforms. And this is the only thing what it means here 